and welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm Ema McCarthy. Our focus today is on basic materials and our guest is Randy Watts, the Chief Investment Officer at O'Neill Global Advisors. Basic materials has been one of the best performing sectors so far in 2021 and indeed since the market crash of 2020. As the global economy recovered, so did the demand for materials, helping drive up the share prices of miners, metal refiners and and chemical producers. But then, earlier this year, prices fell back on signs the global economy was slowing. This sector and the ETFs that track it are now down from a peak reached in May. Recent data out of China may add to the gloom. Factory activity in this major materials importer contracted for the first time in one and a half years. And while growth in Europe remains strong, the pace is slowing. But there are bright spots, including US President Joe Biden's $1 trillion infrastructure plan, which is expected to win congressional approval as soon as this month. So where to next? Let's ask O'Neill Global Advisor's Randy Watts. Randy, some analysts think that this sector is now overvalued, especially given evidence that global growth may be peaking. What's your view? So I guess really two, two points on that. First, thanks for having me back. The first is that generally these cycles for, for basic material stocks last about two, at least two years. We're about 16 months into this. So really we're more like mid cycle. So we do think there's more to go in terms of that. In terms of valuations, if the companies actually hit their 2021 earnings targets, many of these stocks are not expensive and are trading in multiples in the five to 10 times range for this year's earnings. So if they make the earnings estimates, we think the, stock, the, the sector is still cheap. And Randy, in terms of the Biden infrastructure bill, you favor steelmakers. Why is that? Really two reasons. First, auto demand is picking up in the U.S. And second, if the infrastructure bill goes through, there's going to be a lot of construction done and improvements done on highways and bridges, et cetera. And that's really going to spur steel demand. An added kicker is that China has recently put in tariffs on their steel exports. So that's really reducing Chinese steel, and that's helping both U.S. and EU producers. And you also say that the move to electric vehicles is also expected to support the sector. How is that? Well, EV are really going nuts right now. They were up about 40 percent last year. They're forecast to be up 70 to 75 percent. Most electric vehicles are driven by lithium batteries. So there's a huge demand for lithium. And so we think that's going to be a multi-year theme as both the U.S and the EU shift to more electric vehicles. And we think investors can play this for actually several years. So given all that, Randy, what are your picks? Well, on the steel side, we really like Cleveland Cliffs, which is the largest US steel producer. They recently did two acquisitions. Their results so far this year have been very strong. They're expected to generate over three billion in free cash flow this year. And they're using that cash flow to delever their balance sheet. So we really like that. We like Steel Dynamics as well. This is a company that operates in flat rolled, in structural, and in bar. And I should note on the valuation side, because we talked about that earlier, both these stocks, if they hit their earnings estimates, are actually trading less than five times earnings for 2021. On the EV battery side, I really like two stocks, Albemarle and Livent. And what's interesting about both of these companies is much like the market, they're actually doubling their capacity over the next several years. So as that battery demand ramps, they're going to be able to meet it and it's going to really result in much better earnings and revenues for both these stocks. So that's a place I would look for investors. Thank you so much, Randy Watts, the Chief Investment Officer at O'Neill Global Advisors. Before I go, here are some of the top stories in the sector. The amount of annual aluminium capacity shut down in China so far this year has exceeded 2 million tonnes. This according to Chinese state-backed research house and take. Several regions have imposed restrictions on aluminium makers' consumption of electricity because of tight power supplies and pressure to reduce emissions. Fears of tight supplies pushed benchmark London prices to a decade peak above $2,700 per tonne. 
Germany's economy ministry says carmaker Opel will receive a grant worth approximately $500 million for its battery factory based in the country as part of an initiative to create a homegrown industry. The market for batteries destined for electric vehicles is dominated by Asian makers, but the European Union and Germany are keen to create European battery giants. Since 2019, Berlin has committed $3.5 billion to battery production projects. Projects. And South African miner Impala Platinum Holdings posted a 123% surge in full year profit, boosted by higher prices of platinum group metals and increased output. Implants, as the company is known, witnessed an almost 18% rise in the price of platinum, 28% rise in palladium, and a more than twofold increase in the price of rhodium. But like many other materials companies, its share price has languished since May and is now flat on the year. And that is your roundup of the materials sector. I'm Ema McCarthy and this is Reuters.